Hello, welcome to IT Career Track videos. So these are set of videos which we are going to, where we are going to talk about uh, different career tracks. Uh, so this is a second or third video. So if you haven't gone through the earlier videos, it's important you follow them in sequence. So the last time we talked a little bit about the developer, and today we're going to talk about more about QA. Now some of you have emailed me some questions, and uh, so I'm just going to be, spend a little bit on the developer again. So on a high level, as we talked about, there are types of jobs. One is engineering, and then it's non-engineering. So under engineering, you have developers who basically write codes uh, or do most of the extensive programming work. And so these are sort of you know, the bulk of uh, the IT jobs get generated and also provides uh, good salaries and uh, a good career path. Uh, the dev so you start with the entry level developer and then if you are on a little bit close you want to stay with the technology then you try to become an architect now on a big companies uh, everybody has some sort of a senior uh, IT architect now if you are on the managerial side then you can move up on the managerial track where from developer you can become or uh, uh, developer or software engineer you can become a senior software engineer and then you can become a team lead and then eventually becoming a VP of uh, engineering or technologist or CTO. Now for the QA which is quality assurance the, the job the QA job what the QA person does so this developer writes software the QA person tests the software and and make sure that this is ready for end user usage. So if there are, so typically a QA job, you know, they will test the software and then if there are problems happen, which are called bugs, it gets sent to the developer and then it again comes back after they fix those and then goes to the test testing by the QA. So this is a sort of iterative cycle till the product is released for the end user. Now there are two types of QA jobs. One is white box testing. So let me write white box excuse my handwriting let's see let me see if i can write better white box and then the second one is black box so white box testing is uh, is where you get into little bit internals of the application and test it so for example, uh, a white box test example is that let's say if an application inserts records into the database, then you may have to write some SQL uh, to validate that data. So that you know you're sort of doing some internal invest in investigation. Whereas in black box, you purely think the product is a black box and you see how the end user behaves. Uh, so you never really write SQL to check the data, but you just you know, maybe from an external side, just like the way an end user would interact with the product, you use it like that. So it involves definitely less technical knowledge. Um, uh, so that's um, sort of the thing. So uh, a, a you know uh, some QA environment I have seen is a little bit uh, more technology technically inclined, meaning you may have to write some smaller programs and not definitely as much as a developer does. Uh, but in other Q organization I have seen it is purely mostly black box where you know you really don't have to have any um, uh, technical knowledge uh, but having said that um, you know the way it works is that the more technical knowledge you have the stronger you get and in the QA um, but most of the QA so being a good QA person you have to have two things one is you have to be uh, you, know, you have to know about the system um, different parts of the system so let's say and you have to be able to learn that and then second is that definitely if you have a little bit of technical skills or can write sh short programs uh, it definitely helps the third one is uh, UI design now UI design is um, something like uh, let's say if a product has a website or uh, an interface so these people usually does the graphical user interface part of it. So for example, um, uh, they will do the HTML mockups or they will create designs of a website or of a product 
in uh, in a in a drawing tool like uh, Photoshop or Corel Draw, and then try to uh, dis do the HTML um, uh, page of it, and then try to pass into the developer so that he can start programming and make it a full fledged product. So UI design typically the main skill is needed is some sort of uh, you know artistic ability or artistic skills or um, where you can design uh, stuff. Uh, so it needs also that type of personality because you this is more of like UI designer is more of an artist than of a programmer. So it is less of an engineering than of an artist, more of a arts than of a science. So that's basic skills of UI designer. If you are an artist or if you are artist in mind and you want to get into IT and you don't want to program, probably this is could be a good uh, place to start with. Then there is administration. Administration is different types of roles. One is uh, sysadmin. Sysadmins are who takes care of Windows and Unix uh, or servers or machines in the company. So sysadmins typically uh, do, you know, a company will have a lot of hardware and software. So hardware part would be Unix, Unix servers or desktop servers, Windows servers, or it could be also a lot of clients. And all of these would run a lot of software. So a sysadmin's job is to uh, make sure all the servers are running properly, they are backed up or correctly, there is no crash. And they, also they are, a lot of their uh, time also gets uh, spent on installing software or installing uh, the enhancement or patches of software. So the, the broad level of these administrative jobs, even though it involves definitely less of programming, but it involves a skill, a broad skill of or a skill of broad range of technologies. So in a typically in an engineering organization, you may have like say 20 engineers, but you have maybe two or three sysadmins and who have to know all the different parts of the system. <coughs> and so there are typically sysadmins are Windows sysadmins or Unix sysadmins. Then there is something called DBA, which is called database administrator. This is also a sort of a sysadmin role only, but the difference is it only deals with the databases. So you can have like an Oracle DBA or you can have a MySQL DBA. Um, so it, their job is to make sure the database runs fine, uh, database performs fast. Sometimes some DBAs also uh, deal with the developers to make sure they are writing, uh, you know, uh, good SQLs to make sure that, that everybody is uh, writing good uh, good queries so that the the system works fine so again the dba is everything has to do with the database so other than programming the everything involves everything associated with the database is done by the dba so a lot of times they take the backups they restore if there is a crash happens in the database they talk with the developers to make sure they write good queries they set the standards of database so it's <coughs> Excuse me. It's quite a intensive role, but definitely has to do less with programming again, but more of um, uh, more of you know little. little. So sysadmin typically doesn't write a lot of programs, but you know they sometimes end up writing small programs to automate tasks. So it does involve uh, a programming, uh, you know, some sort of programming experience or some sort of programming um, element to its job. Then there is uh, something called IT help desk. So IT help desk is against its administrative role. Uh, okay, excuse me. I think there is some problem happened. That's why we end up drawing a line. Uh, but I think you can still read the text. So IT help desk is uh, it's in the administrative category. Only thing is that it is a little bit lower level than sysadmins. So typical IT help desk would serve the the different. Uh, they call it uh, desktop or laptops and make sure that uh, those they do not have viruses or they have the latest software. If there is a you know if somebody is having a problem they may have to go and uh, and go to the person's desk and help him out. So you can think uh, you know, the difference between IT help desk and sysadmin could be the sysadmin takes care of all the back end servers whereas our IT help desk it usually takes care of all the uh, front end uh, machines meaning all the each individual desktops and uh, and clients uh, and they make sure their email 
system is working fine in each, everybody's uh, desktop and if they are somebody has a problem, they has a virus, they have to go and clean the viruses from their machine. Then there is something called release manager. So, we will talk about release management in our next video. So, this is called release uh, manager.